Hey there, welcome to a very early morning edition of Kung Fu Physics. I'm working through practice physics GRE problems. Uh, this is a redo. This is a redo of a problem and I did it in a very logical way and I think most people would do it the problem, this problem that I'm going to do in the exact same way. And then I realized that there is a much better way to do the problem and this this can go from being a problem that will definitely take you at least a little under two minutes to solve to one that could potentially take you 30 seconds to solve. So, um, well, maybe, maybe. But but this is the way to do this problem. I think you guys will enjoy it. So the one I'm looking at is number 32 off of the 1996 exam. It looks like this. So let's do it. Uh, look at the answers first. Answers are just three, two, one, a half, and a third. So that doesn't help me really. I have to start into the problem. Number 32. Three equal masses, little m, are rigidly connected to each other by massless rods of length fancy L, forming an equilateral triangle as shown above. The assembly is to be given an angular velocity omega, about an axis perpendicular to the triangle. For fixed omega, the ratio of the kinetic energy of the assembly for an axis through B Paired with that for an axis through A is equal to. Okay, so physically you should understand what we're doing is you're kind of taking a, an axle, if you will, and uh, in the two different situations you're stabbing it through those different points. So uh, through point A you stab it through the center and then you rotate the thing around that way and then point uh, B you stab it out at the edge and you rotate the thing around that way, right? Um, so that's the two different comparisons. Now, one way you can mess up this problem quickly is by not understanding what a ratio is and exactly what is asked. When it asks the ratio of the kinetic energy of the assembly through B, so it's saying kinetic energy through B, the ratio of that to the kinetic energy through A. So step number one is just being able to translate the English of the problem when you talk about a ratio into the math of the problem correctly. And that's as simple as doing it, it that way. When you're comparing this to that, you're really saying this divided by that, right? And, and that is an easy way to lose a point here. If you reversed it, you can see that the reciprocals are in all the answers. And so unless you happen to be wanting to pick one, um, you could potentially accidentally pick the reciprocal if you had this backwards. So don't do that. That should be pretty obvious though to most of you guys. So now moving a step further. I said this would be fast and it is, but I do like to comment on, on this a little bit. So when you do a rotational kinetic energy, you know it's got a translational analog and it's just one half you know you, that's how I remember the rotational things one half mv squared instead of that I use one half i omega squared and so those are my kinetic energies so what you might realize in this problem is that all that crap just drops out because it is the same omega in this case it's the same omega so what you're really comparing is the moments of inertia of the two now, uh, you can get the moments of inertia. This is, there are two ways, several ways, I'm sure, but there's, there's the long crap way to get the moments of inertia that I did in the video before this, and then there's this way that I'm gonna do to do it. So, uh, getting the moment of inertia about A is really easy, because there's three point particles, right? They're massless rods connecting them, so those that don't affect anything. You've just got the point particles. And I know in my head that a point particle adds in a system of particles. It adds to the moment of inertia as mr squared, where r is the distance from the center. Uh, or, well, no, from the axis that I'm taking the rotation around out to that point. So I just know I've got three of those masses, and they're located at r squared. And what r is going to be in the picture is those little center lines that are not labeled, right? So the lines connecting A to the points N. That's what R is. And here's the part that you're gonna love. Now when you do 
this. When you take the point around here, now this is the shortcut that you would love, is that to get that second moment of inertia, use the parallel axis theorem. And the parallel axis theorem, in my head, what it means when I am taking a moment of inertia of something that is not about its center of mass. All the tables that you have for moments of inertia are all about the center of mass. But in real world problems and, and physics GRE problems, you're not always going to have the luxury of just doing stuff around the center of mass. You may be rotating something around another point. So what the parallel axis theorem says is that the moment of inertia is equal to the moment of inertia of the center of mass plus, and the way that I remember it, is just m r squared again, meaning all of the masses are shrunk down as a point mass located at that distance between the axis that you're going to be rotating around to the center of mass. Okay? So that's the shortcut for this. Now I know what the center of the the I center of mass is because I just calculated it for this. This is the moment of inertia about the center of mass of this three particle little crap triangle thing, right? And I know it, it's right there, so I just bring that down. Well, what is m r squared? What is the total mass of the three particle system? 3m. And what is the r squared? Well, again, the r from the axis that I'm going to be rotating point B into the center of mass, hopefully you can see that as an equilateral triangle like that, the center of mass is indeed at point A. Well, that's just going to be R squared. So I knew you guys would like seeing it this way, right? So I got six, when, when I do back into here, I got six MR, little MR squared, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, 3m r squared. Isn't that cool? Alright, so of course all that crap cancels out and I get 2. And that's the, the, the difference between the, or excuse me, that's the ratio between the moments of inertia and also the ratio between the kinetic energies of course. So that was a very long winded descript description because I got a little bit excited and and blah 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 but if, if you were doing that problem that way on the physics GRE you could do it very fast it leads you to um, 2 as the ratio and there is indeed a 2 would be answer B that's the one we want to pick for number 32 off of the 96 exam so if you don't know it by now then review your parallel axis theorem and I was supposed to have it written on this, but I forgot. And uh, look it up. <laughs> if you don't know it off the top of your head and don't have a really good physical intuition of the par parallel axis theorem, then definitely review it. Because just in the problems, the mechanics problems that I've already reviewed, it has come up numerous times. So super important for the physics GRE. And uh, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.